I was rummaging through some old family paperwork when I found my death certificate. It was an older brother with my name who was a stillborn a few years before I came along. Around two years ago, I was laying down on my bed and was exhausted. Door slightly open so that the cat can get in. I closed my eyes for a moment and opened them again. I looked toward the door and there is my friend hanging upside down above the doorframe outside my room, looking into my room with a big grin on his face. I called out his name. Anon? Is that you? And he moved away from the door and disappeared. He's been dead since 2014. Leon Cholgosh, assassin of William McKinley, the 25th president of the United States, was electrocuted for his crime on October 29th, 1901, at Auburn Prison in Auburn, New York. Among the personal effects found in his cell was a U.S. quarter stamped with the date 2218. The face in profile on said quarter was not George Washington, but rather a face which has yet to be identified. A deja vu is actually a glitch in reality and it indicates that something has just been changed. Someone or something has ceased to exist. All memories and records of their existence are erased forever. A deja vu happens when they get into your brain, when they need to change your memories. Maybe to erase your brother from the world. You know, the brother that you never had. Shadow people exist. You won't see them because you don't think about them. They only appear when your mind is aware of them and eyes start looking to the corners of the room. Now, when you read this, something inside you will trigger. You are now aware and they can sense it. Try to forget this post. Don't look over your shoulder. Don't look into mirrors. Don't look into the corners of the room. You are alone in the dark. The power has been knocked out by a heavy storm. All you can hear is the rain on the window. You're stumbling around trying to find candles and a lighter when someone puts a matchbox into your hand. I remember when I was like six or seven. I had this dream where I was abducted by these weird looking aliens. Not aliens that media produce but literal testicle-looking aliens. I think that's supposed to say tentacle. I was in an area and one alien, I assume the king alien, gave me a ray gun or something. Behind me, there was a pile of flesh and blood or something. It was really disgusting looking. I immediately realized it was my dad, though it looked like putty for me to play with. The alien dude ordered me to do something, but I was too busy sobbing to understand and I ended up being shot. After the dream, I woke up in tears, sweating. I don't remember a lot of it at this point, but holy fuck, as a kid, that really messed me up. I was pretty fucked up as a kid, and used to buy plastic dolls and cut the limbs off. Then, I'd make a line of them facing towards the door at night because I figured my best chance of survival if a burglar slash serial killer came into my room, was to scare them away with limbless dolls. I did this for about six months. As I said, I was pretty fucked up, and occasionally used to run around the house at night, knocking furniture over, so my parents fixed a lock on my door so I couldn't get out until the morning. There were about 20 dolls in a line, and one morning, four dolls were not facing towards the door anymore and were staring at my bed. I remember that shit so clearly. The eyes of a cat 
are windows to your soul. They can see other dimensions, they can see your aura, and what's wrong with you. A cat knows when you're happy, when you're in bad health, when you're troubled, or when you're hungry. He knows when you're feeling magnanimous, and he knows when you're about to die. It's fortunate that cats can't talk, because you have a lot of secrets. The cat knows. All kids have their fears when they're young. Most common is an intense fear of the dark. As a kid, my brain would often play tricks on me and make me think the shadows in my room were moving. A lot of the time, I would see what appeared to be the shape of a man moving along my walls. When I would tell my mom, she would just say that the street lamps outside were casting shadows through my window. Of course, I never believed her. I was convinced there was a ghost in my room watching me sleep every night. I can recall one night, though, where my fear seemed to materialize. I was nine at the time. I remember it perfectly. It was a hot summer night, and our air conditioning had broken the morning before. Of course, my dad insisted that he could fix it himself, but all his attempts just caused more problems. Well, at this point, it was unbearably hot in the house, and the whole family was ready for bed. My mother went around as I changed into pajamas, opening all the windows in the house to allow the air to circulate. She kissed me goodnight, opened my window, and left the room. She shut the door behind her, which I always hated. It made me feel like I would have nowhere to go if something did happen. And that's exactly what happened. I was terrified as usual. I laid in my bed, sheets pulled up to my chin, teddy bear in my arm, staring up at the ceiling. I tried not to look to the sides because I was always scared that I would catch something out of the corner of my eye. I finally looked at my new digital clock on my nightstand after what felt like hours. It read 3 a.m. I got a little excited because I remember realizing this was the latest I'd ever stayed up. In my excitement, I made the mistake of relaxing and turning my back to my door to face the wall. That's when I heard the noises. I knew my parents weren't up. They both were heavy sleepers and they wouldn't be up until 7 a.m. My older sister wasn't even home at the time, but I knew I heard the sounds of feet scuffling outside my door. They got louder as they approached. And at this point, I was nearly in tears. I couldn't handle the impending feeling of terror. I jumped out of my bed, bawling, and ran to the corner of the room with my blanket and teddy bear. I pulled it over my head and held Teddy close, shaking and sniffling. Then, the door creaked open. I could see through the light sheet a bit, unfortunately. A tall, shadowy figure stepped into my room. He stopped and looked around and looked puzzled when he saw the window. I tried to muffle my crying the best I could as he walked past me and shut my window. That's when I realized I had no place to run, and I couldn't keep my crying quiet any longer. He heard me and spun around. The figure started to step towards me. I looked away and buried my knees into my face. I felt the sheet get ripped off of me, and I didn't dare look up. Then I heard his voice. It was deep and frightening. He asked what I was doing there. I didn't answer, and he seemed to get angry. He asked again with a hint of malice, and grabbed me by the arm to pull me up. I fought back. I fell over onto my side as he attempted to pull me up. I kicked and screamed until I finally gave up and opened my eyes. He was gone. My mom and dad were running through my doorway. After I calmed down, I tried to explain what I saw, but, of course, they told me it was just a dream and sent me back to bed. I didn't sleep that night, but it was the last time I ever saw him. I'm 22 years old now. My parents moved into a larger house, and my sister is off in California doing her quote-unquote own thing, 
as she caught it when she was a teenager. So, I was given the house to call my own. So about a week ago, I returned from a trip to the beach with a few friends that I went to high school with. It was fantastic, and I was nice and relaxed and ready for a nap when I got home. I pulled into the driveway sometime in the early morning, grabbed all my bags, and fumbled with my keys at my door. When I got inside, everything seemed alright for the most part. I sat my bags down on my couch and kicked off my shoes. I was about to plop down and turn on the TV when I heard what sounded like someone shifting around in my bedroom down the hall. My door was locked when I came in, so I wasn't too worried. Probably just hearing things, I thought. Nonetheless, my curiosity got the best of me, and I slowly headed down through my hallway to my bedroom. As I walked, I could hear more of that same shifting noise, almost as if someone was laying in my bed. I relaxed for a second and sighed. A friend of mine had a key to my house and liked to crash here occasionally. He must have shown up while I was away. He likes to make himself at home like that. As I reached for the handle, I heard something jump up and run. He must be playing a joke on me, I thought. I opened the door slowly and looked around. My bed was empty, but unmade. I looked up and saw that my window was open. I knew for a fact I locked everything before I left. I walked over to it cautiously, pulled it shut, and latched it. As I went to turn around, I heard it. I heard the crying. I froze for a second, ready to have a panic attack. I caught my breath and turned around. In my corner was a huddled mass of blanket, shaking violently. I knew for a fact it wasn't there when I walked in. I would have noticed something like that. I bent over and tore the sheet up, throwing it back behind me. A small child was sitting in the corner, sobbing loudly with his head buried in his knees. I asked him what he was doing there. I was just as frightened as he was. He didn't answer, and out of fear, I asked him again while grabbing his arm to help him up. He immediately slid onto his side and went to kick me in the knee. I freaked out and squeezed my eyes tight, half expecting this lunatic kid to jump up and claw my eyes out. I stood with my arms in front of my eyes for a second. Nothing happened. I slowly lowered my arms and opened my eyes and stepped backwards to make sure I wasn't going to be attacked. The little boy was gone. I turned around to find my bed was made just like I had left it, with the sheets and all. I looked around, still scared, and then noticed that lying on the floor was my old teddy bear that I've had since I was a child. I bent down to pick it up. It was warm and wet from tears. <laughs>